Hi, welcome to today's session about the demographic transition model. The demographic transition model is just a way to present an idea about how population changes over time. So let's have a look at the title here. So we have the word model. In geography and other areas, that's just a word to say, it's a way to present an idea. The word transition, that's just about change. And we have the word demographic or demography. So that's to do with population. So essentially, the demographic transition model, sometimes shortened to DTM, is a way to present an idea about population change. Each country goes through many stages. Sometimes it can be very quick through the stages. Sometimes it can take a huge amount of time to get through each one of these stages. So stage one, two, three, four, and stage five. There's a little bit of debate about at the moment, but there are some countries thought to be in stage five at the moment. So let's have a look at how the birth rate, the death rate, and how the total number of people change every year. Let's start with the birth rate. In some isolated groups in the world, maybe not a lot of contact with the outside world, the birth rate remains quite high. That will be due to maybe religious reasons, maybe social encouragement, maybe family planning and lack of contraception. So there will be a few remote groups. Maybe some low income countries. Also in stage 2, birth rate is quite high. So maybe Kenya might be in that stage at the moment. Then, over time, as the role, the status of women particularly increase, as the amount of contraception available is increasing in the country, the birth rate starts to fall. Through stage three, so maybe countries such as Brazil might be in that stage at the moment, the birth rates are falling. And then we have stage four, maybe countries such as the USA, maybe France, and maybe the UK is towards the end of stage four. Then let's start talking about the death rate. So we have the death rate. The death rate also in stage one, so a few remote groups in the world, the death rate is quite high. It might be a little bit volatile, so maybe there might be diseases, there might be famine, there might be poor medical knowledge, and quite a few children quite soon after birth might die uh, due to lack of medical care. However, there's lots and lots of easily curable diseases in the world. So suddenly in stage two, when those cures are available, then the death rate starts to decrease quite rapidly. And then in stage three, in stage four, there's only so many diseases you can cure at the moment. So that's where we are. Now, let's think about the total number of people, how this affects things. So here, you can see the birth rate is high, the death rate is high, so total population will be quite low. Even though there's lots of births, there's also lots of people who are dying as well. Let's look at stage two. That's the birth rate, that's the death rate, so there's lots of babies being born and not as many people dying. So the population is increasing. Now the rate of increase starts off quite slow. But then when we get to this stage here, the rate of increase increases. So the population increases at an increasing rate. It goes up more quickly because you can see there's more births than there are deaths. Now you can see at this stage here, it's still increasing, but the rate of increase is not as high. That's the birth rate, that's the death rate. So overall, there are more births than are deaths, but the gap isn't as large as it is here. So overall, we have that as the total population. And here, there's almost no gap at all. And that's possibly where the UK is at the moment. Now, some countries, depending on immigration, depending on social values, depending on how they view 
uh, the role of children in society might change in, change in stage five. Some countries, such as maybe Japan, there's evidence in Italy, there's some evidence in Germany, that the birth rate starts actually to fall. Counteracting that, we have the death rate. The death rate remains the same. So interestingly, we can see here that there are fewer babies being born, so actually the population will be going down. That's the number of deaths, and there are fewer births effectively replacing the people that have died. So there's a proposal in some countries, stage five, the population goes down. Some countries, such as Japan, are actually quite concerned about that. There's uh, thought to be fewer and fewer people every year in the country, and there's a concern about the amount of taxes and the amount of money that's raised for the government in that. So, overall, we have the birth rate, so the death rate, and the total population. The birth rate stays high and then decreases due to increased contraception. The death rate starts off high because of diseases, maybe famines. However, easily curable diseases mean the death rates then quickly drop off. There's a huge gap here towards the end of stage two and the country's population will increase rapidly. Then the total population of the country goes up slowly at first and then more rapidly and then it goes up by a decreasing rate. Stage four is where many you would call MEDCs or higher income countries, HICs, that's where many HICs are at the moment. So we have here a proposal for what stage five might look like and some countries such as Germany, Japan, possibly Italy are in this stage at the moment where there's fewer babies being born and fewer, ch fewer children are being given birth to in the countries maybe because of all kinds of different reasons. So that's the demographic transition model. It's all about birth rates, it's all about death rates, it's about the change in population and it's about how that happens over time. Demographic transition model.